If we want the what God has for our life, then we have to reject the passions of our flesh. And the scripture says, pursue love, go after it. Now that, that, that knocks holes in the world system because the world's theory is that you fall in love. Well, if you fall in love, you can fall out of love. And if you fall in love, you can fall in love with someone else. It's almost like a failure. <laughs> I've fallen in love. <laughs> now, there's no doubt, I fell in love when I met my wife. I had no idea. Okay? That how wonderful. Here comes God like the shovel. Get the shovel. <laughs> how wonderful it got later it was more than the surface falling in love, infatuated yeah. with her eyes and her hair and, and, and everything about her. But there's something different when we become thorough. Living with her, laying down our life for her, changes the concept of love. I mean, I love her differently now after 15 years of marriage. I promise you that I did after 15 days a day. And I'll be honest with you, I'm more thankful today than I was those first 15 days. And I'm more appreciative today of that love because of the choices that we've made over the last 15 years that we're going to continue to make over the next ever how many until death do us part because of choices that we make to love each other that isn't just feelings. Paul said, pursue it. Now, I don't believe he was just necessarily talking about the love that a man has for a wife. I'm not even sure Timothy was married. But this agape love is to be pursued relentlessly. It, it is something that we have to go after. And this agape love is unconditional love. It's, it's committal love. It's I will love you to death do us part. It's I will lay down my life for my brother even when my brother hurt me. It is Jesus on the cross while we sinners put Him to death. He says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It is Stephen, as he's being stoned, dropping to his knees and saying, Lord, don't hurt, hold this charge against them. That's some love. And, and Paul's telling Timothy, pursue this. Pursue this kind of love. Pursue this kind of commitment to one another. It isn't whether we've had a bad hair day or not that we make a decision whether we love someone or not. Love is more than how we feel, but it can be seen in the way that we live and in the way that we respond. Tuesday night. I want to share this early. I'll share it now. We had a gentleman walk in the doors on Tuesday night. He was here the night, the, the Tuesday night before. This was his second Tuesday night. The first night, he smelled like a brewery. The second night, he didn't smell like a brewery. I don't know because he didn't have any water. I don't know. But he comes here in group. And once group's over, I won't talk about what happens in group. Stays in, what happens in group stays in group. But after group was over, we sat over there by those steps, me and him. And he just cried. I can hardly say anything because he was just crying so much. And a few words I did get in, I said, God loves you. And he cried even more. And I said, I love you. And he cried even more. And he said, thank you. It's been so long since I heard those words. But see, we didn't stop with the words. And, and Paul said to Timothy, pursue this kind of love. Pursue this kind of commitment. Let him to the Lord. But he said, you know what? I don't have anywhere to live. I, I, I don't have anywhere safe to live. I immediately come to rest him. Met him right over here by this post. I said, we got to do something. He said, I can't, can't do it in the night. He said, but in the morning, I'll do it. I got on the phone, called Good Samaritan in. I said, I hate to call you in the middle of the night, or 9 o'clock at night or whatever time, 9.30. Uh, I said, but we got a guy here. He really needs to enter the program. Well, having to call in the morning, we'll interview him over the phone and we'll go from there. That all happened. Russell took him on Wednesday morning. So not only gave his life to the Lord here, but we invested time, we invested energy, Rusty invested money, 
uh, in, 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 in time in order to get him there. And I'm not doing this to, to, to puff Rusty up, though it's, it's good every now and then to be acknowledged. And here's the thing. Love is more than how, what we're saying. It's more than what we've, we're feeling. It's tangible. It works. It operates. It gets up off the couch. It gets up and makes food for somebody. It works the nursery. It does things. It ties. It commits itself to do right for somebody else. It dethrones itself. I've taken people spent two hours taking a guy to Good Samaritan in, and he got there, changed his mind. I wasn't happy. Because <laughs> I went from Greenfield to Hamilton. I wasn't happy. And we didn't have, we didn't talk a lot on the way home. I brought it back. We didn't talk well, as the closer we got to Hillsboro or Greenfield, we started talking a little bit more. But I wasn't ready, I wasn't in a talking mood. <laughs> Love is sometimes disappointing. Yes. Let me say this. Love isn't, but the action that you use can be. Not everyone responds to our love. Not, ever resp not everyone responds the way that we want to respond. But we still have a responsibility to pursue it, to go after it, to not to dethrone or to dethrone ourselves and get Jesus back on the throne so that people can see that Jesus does love them. <coughs> you see, it's something to do with their faith. And Jesus said these words, or, or I think this is in James actually, it says, you know, if you if you say to someone who's cold, you know, be warm, be warm and well fed. You're doing nothing. You're not doing nothing. You're saying some nice words, okay? But actually, it's not going to mean a lot. It's not going to fix the chill bumps. It's not going to fill their stomach. But love is action. Love is when we tangibly do something to make a difference. February 4th, 1990, a man entered my life and sat down beside me and wasn't afraid to sit by a drunk and share Christ with me and therefore I become born again, child of God. And later he said, I thought he was just another drunk, druggy kid, but I had to see for sure. And what we need to do is be willing to invest and, that, and I'm not telling you, you know, you don't need to guard your heart because sometimes you do need to guard your heart. And, and you can't always invest where someone's not invested in themselves. And you can't always give someone money that's going to take that money and use it in ways because you're not really helping them at all. But we need to have find a way to, to make our love tangible and real. Love is more than what we feel. Love is action, and the Lord says, pursue after this kind of love. Here's what we could have said to him. We could have said, that's not my problem. That's not, you don't have to say, well, that, that's not my problem. I didn't tell you to put heroin in your veins in the first place. I never told you to grow up in the family you grew up in. Okay, But that's not what we said. We, we, we could have been like Cain. It didn't work too well for him. Okay. Who am I? My brother's keeper? <coughs> but that's not what we did. We, we made the investment. If we want to reject the passage of our flesh, this is the last one. 